today we are talking about Black Ops 2, Black Ops 2's multiplayer only. This is going to be a multiplayer only review. I will not be talking about campaign or zombies. You can watch the Ackman for those kinds of analysis videos, but this is only going to be on multiplayer. I'm going to dive deep, deep into uh, the contents of multiplayer. So hopefully you enjoy the video. We're also going to have a special guest, Dying Food, come on in the middle of uh, you know one of the sequences here, and he's going to explain what he likes, dislikes about Black Ops 2, so you get an ulterior perspective, and so you don't have to listen to my voice straight for 20 minutes. So big shout out to him, link to his channel will be in the description down below. Black Ops 2 launched on November 13th, 2012 on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii U, and later became backwards compatible on Xbox One in April of 2017. Like I said, I will not be talking about campaign or zombies, but I will be talking about uh, basically everything within the multiplayer, right? Maps, streaks, perks, the meta, game modes, the grind, the league play, DLC, pros and cons, and eventually my final grade. And I'll also be grading each of the sections I uh, listed right above. There should be timestamps on the screen as to when I talk about certain areas, so if you feel like skipping around or just watching different chapters, feel free to do so at your own pace. Before this intro wraps up, uh, I just want to remind you guys to subscribe and leave a like if you're new to the channel, if you enjoy the video, and leave a comment down below on which game you'd like to see me do next. Currently, I have Modern Warfare 3 scheduled for next, but uh, I'm open to suggestions after that if you want to see this series. If not, let me know that in the comment section as well, but without further ado, do let's jump into the maps as far as maps go in my personal opinion black ops 2 did it amazingly well i'm going to give maps an a minus overall yes there are some stinkers we have aftermath we have turbine we have drone i'm sure all of you guys know all of these maps uh, are not great right a lot of these maps cater to a slower play style carrier i would throw in there as well aftermath is just a downturn from mono for three uh just older brother however setting aside the stinkers we have some of the most amazing maps we've ever seen in Call of Duty history. Hijacked, Plaza, Raid, Slums, Standoff, many of these maps are just in this amazing category of like iconic, goat maps, three-laned, fast-paced, they're all saturated, they're all colorful, they all do their job well in terms of promoting movement, disincentivizing, you know, camping and not using target finders. A lot of these maps do their job well, they're fun to play on, they're built for 6v6, they're built for the player count. Current day Call of Duties, Modern War, Warfare, even Black Ops Cold War to a certain extent, a lot of their game modes, a lot of their maps are not seemingly built for the same 6v6 fast paced experience that Call of Duty was built upon. Black Ops 2 maps in my opinion, specifically the ones I mentioned, do take that into account and accommodate a 6v6 rushing playstyle. Yes, you can camp, and I'll talk about that in the meta section, but a large majority of pacing in a Call of Duty game is heavily dependent on the maps, which is why I wanted to talk about the maps first. I'll get into DLC maps as well, uh, as far as Nuketown coming back as well, uh, but I just want to mention that there is a small mini section of maps that are just like not bad, but not amazing goat, right? And in that category, I would put Express, Plaza, maybe Meltdown and Overflow. And before I move on from maps, I just want to say there was no skippable maps in my opinion, like always 100% skip. Uh, maybe Aftermath sometimes, it depends on how I feel, but even Aftermath, compared to some of the more recent Call of Duty games maps we've seen, I would play Aftermath over them. So to conclude, like I said before, maps are going to get an A- solely because there were four or so maps at the launch of Black Ops 2 that were just not my cup of tea and I don't think a lot of people's cup of tea either. Let's move on to score streaks. Uh, this is actually the first game, the first title in Call of Duty to utilize score streaks over kill streaks, setting a precedent of playing objective far more and having objective way more in terms of score rather than just solely getting kills. So if you didn't hop on a dom flag, if you didn't pick up kill confirm tags, you would not be doing as well as someone who is doing those things. I honestly think a lot of the score streaks were useful and pretty iconic at the same time. Black Ops introduced the Hunter Killer Drone, the Death Machine, the War Machine, Escort Drone, the AGR, the Lodestar. It brought back the K9 unit, the VTOL warship, Orbital VSAT. There was a streak for everybody and everybody had a set of streaks that they could use and they were not insanely difficult to get. 
because of the way the score streak system worked and because tags and you know flags were incentivized to cap and things like that it was easier to uh, to actually go on these streaks you didn't have to go on a 15 or a 20. however if you didn't play the objective these streaks were pretty difficult to get which is something i really enjoyed about this game because playing objective means more people are forced to move if they want to actually hit their streaks as opposed to camping behind corners and not picking up tags but if you get 500 points for a kill and 50 for picking up a tag why would you ever pick up a tag right if memory serves me correctly uh, tags in kill confirmed were 150 while kills were 50 points obviously three times the points so you would want that if i'm incorrect it might be 100 points per tag but you can let me know in the comment section if you remember my personal score streak setup was the lightning strike, the stealth chopper, and either the canine unit or swarm just because it worked. You know, there was a lot of streaks to choose from. And so even if some didn't do as well as others, like for instance, the warthog didn't always do well, you could always switch it up and use something on that map. Which is why I really enjoyed having either the choice of a canine unit or a swarm because if it is an open map you use the swarm, if it's a closed building map you use the canine unit, either way you would do work. And a lot of pub stompers I know would use both. Because of that, I'm going to give score streaks an A in this game. Let's move on over to perks. Perks were a little difficult to talk about. The first thing I want to mention in the tier 1 slot is Ghost. They actually fixed Ghost from Black Ops 1 to make it to where you had to be moving. I don't necessarily know if you had to be sprinting, but all you had to do was be moving for Ghost to activate. So it again de-incentivizes campers, an issue, a huge issue that was in Black Ops 1 that a lot of people uh, easily exploited and took care of, right? In tier 2, unfortunately, toughness was a crutch perk. I believe toughness is probably one of the only perks in COD history that I think of when it comes to being a crutch perk, because if it just messed up your gunfights if you didn't have it. You needed that reduced flinch that toughness gave, and unfortunately, a lot of the other perks in that category were not competitive. I think scavenger was probably the only other competitive one, because cold-blooded fast hands and hardwired didn't do nearly as much in comparison to toughness. And lastly, in the tier 3 slot, I always ran dexterity just because it's a rusher's dream. Dead silence and awareness didn't matter nearly as much as sound matters nowadays because footsteps were already fairly quiet in that game. Which is why Thunder always jokes about lightweight toughness dexterity being the holy trinity of uh, the perks in Black Ops 2. And I, I can't disagree. However, I would always run either Ghost or Flak Jacket in tier 1. I could always do without lightweight. However, obviously, as you guys know, lightweight was a really good perk as well. Because of how extremely dominant toughness and dexterity were in particular, I have to lower the perk you know, balancing and the perk grade in this game. So unfortunately, perks is going to land at a B for me. Next up, I want to talk about the meta at the time, particularly with weapons as well as lethals and tacticals. I think we can all agree that uh, this game was mainly focused and encouraged around SMG usage. The MSMC, the Vector, the MP7, uh, you know, the sort. Along with the score streak system, it really incentivizes movement, which is something I really liked about this game. However, speaking on the meta, I found that a lot of guns, a lot of different types of guns, were very viable. Shotguns were good, the Remington, the KSG, you had the Ballista and DSR as sniper rifles, which were amazing at any range, as uh, a lot of people who are frustrated with snipers can easily attest to. You had the target finder LMG usage for people who just didn't want to feel like moving, for people who probably enjoy playing Modern Warfare right now. As well as the M881 and the AN94 as some of your top tier ARs for people who like to run and gun and set up shop here and there. Again, what I really liked was that the fact that all SMGs were pretty usable, there was none that really sucked, even though there probably was one that was statistically the worst. Black Ops 2 also brought about the Pick 10 system, which allowed for a lot of customization that we've never seen up until that point of COD. You could pick up to three attachments, or you could run with extra perks, and it just set up for a lot of customization, a lot of class customization that people could easily take advantage of to fit more to their playstyle, rather than being confined to the traditional, you can only pick these three perks and only use a few attachments on your weapons at a time. The flexibility was a daring choice, but honestly, I think it worked out well because some people could run double lethals, double tacticals, some people could run six perks. And so that's what created balance because you would have to sacrifice something as opposed to just running with every single OP thing in the game. Some future Call of Duties should have learned from Black Ops 2, I feel. Not a lot of the wild cards were super useful. I don't know anybody who ran Overkill, Tactician, or Danger Close unless they were doing some form of challenge. Uh, but at the end of the day, those things were there and added to the flexibility of the meta. 
For all these reasons, I think that the meta slash weapon variety is going to earn an A-. Next up here, let's talk about game modes. Black Ops 2 actually introduced Hardpoint, a prime game mode for competitive play and league play, and I'll talk about that in the future, but Hardpoint was just an amazing addition. We've seen it in so many Call of Duties going forward, just because it's a staple now in terms of competitive play. It's a fun game mode, it gets people moving, and it's really fun when you play with a team, which I think a lot of players actually gravitated towards whenever they had a team because you would try to six man another team without playing in something like Search and Destroy. Another game mode that Black Ops 2 brought about that we haven't seen too much afterwards was actually multi-team where you have three teams of three fighting for objective play. I'm not entirely sure why multi-team wasn't picked up afterwards. I think it just wasn't super popular in comparison to things like Kill Confirmed or Domination or like I said, Hardpoint, but I think it was a unique and interesting idea at the time and I think something like that did lead the way to gunfight in Modern Warfare, for instance, just smaller play fights. We also saw the Mercenary Mosh Pit, solo play only, where you have no parties, which was later adopted into Black Ops 3 and 4. We also can't talk about fun game hosts being back without talking about party games. I can't even get on bank when I see that, bro. Gun games, sticks and stones, one in the chamber, just fun little mini games whenever you didn't feel like sweating, you didn't feel like trying your absolute best, and you just wanted to have fun with some of your friends. You could also do this in custom games, which was just a blast. I remember doing this after school with a lot of my homies and just running some sticks and stones gun game and just seeing who's the best and just, you know, ha having fun for the afternoon. And lastly, in the game modes, we have to talk about combat training, a perfect system for new players to get acquainted with the game. And un unfortunately, I'm not sure why Call of Duty's ended up steering away from this. I really don't know what the point of that was, but I think combat training should be a staple in every single Call of Duty going forward. Due to all these new additions, I am actually going to give game modes an A rating. All right, so it's been well over a year since I've talked into a microphone about Call of Duty. Reason being, there's some people out there that just can't handle the truth. That's it. I, I like to consider myself like the Henry the Fourth, the Holy Roman Emperor, excommunicated from the community for doing nothing but spitting facts. Some opinions maybe come off as just, just a little bit hot, but I think that one thing we could all agree on that Black Ops 2 was the best Call of Duty. It may not be your favorite Call of Duty, it may not be the most fun Call of Duty, but from an objective point of view, it really was the best Call of Duty. We're going to talk about a few quick attributes, what made this game so good, what made it so balanced, and in the process we could wonder, are we ever going to see a game like this again? Because at this rate, I'm highly doubting it. The number one biggest innovation this game made was the Pick 10 system. If you ask any Call of Duty player what is the best way to create a class, 99% of people are going to say pick 10 and it's really not particularly close pick 10 is just the superior way to create a class it gives you a lot of freedom from the traditional restraints not having to use a tactical not having to use a lethal if you don't want to use it you want an extra attachment cool you can have it you want an extra perk Cool, you can have it. Pick 10 is one of the few things that the other two studios, both Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward, have both borrowed from Treyarch, solidifying it as a truly goaded feature in Call of Duty. If there was going to be one Call of Duty game made updated now that was going to have a multi-year lifespan and was going to be alive for, say, five years, you know it would have Pick 10 because it's just tried and true and it works. Even to come up with a replacement for traditional creator class in and of itself is a huge task. We had Divisions in World War II. That was okay, and then there was the weird, like, it was like pick 20 or whatever in COD Ghosts. Both of those worked, but there's a reason that they've never come back, and anyone who's played COD for more than a couple of years will say, we don't want to see that come back, okay? It was a good try, we're glad you tried it out, but pick 10 is just the thing that we actually like. Next massive innovation that Black Ops 2 made that people have tried to since replace and make better but failed miserably score streaks okay this is a very very simple one here now okay nobody likes kill streaks anymore it's outdated that was one of the biggest blunders of modern warfare in my opinion see i will say something bad about modern warfare every now and then and then also we had what was it the point streak system that was like the precursor to score streaks but it, it wasn't quite there okay like even getting assists for your uav kills and stuff like it's all good stuff everybody benefits from it and people just like it better i like it better score streaks encourage objective play which first of all I don't even know how y'all out there just are out there playing TDM and free-for-all or whatever. Like, 
Play an objective game mode, okay? Be a man, first of all. I can think of zero instances, literally zero, where kill streaks would be better than score streaks across the board in any game mode at all. I guess even TDM, like if you get an assist, you get some points for that. It's just better. It really is crazy to look back in hindsight and think that people used to play domination without score streaks. Like, who was out there trying to capture the B flag? Not me. Black Ops 2 was the game that I switched from TDM and free for all and finally you started to become a man. Play domination, play hard point, even kill confirmed. Because the way that you earn your streaks in the game, starting from that point on, pretty much, not every game followed it exactly, but starting from that point on, that's how you get your streaks down. You play the objective and you play it smartly. Third good thing I'm going to talk about is weapon balance. So Black Ops 2, I don't even really think it's close. Maybe you could argue Black Ops 3 was a very, very close second. But I personally think, and I think most of the community thinks, Black Ops 2 had the best weapon balance. It's a game where you could give a good player any gun in the game and they can run around and they can do well with that gun. Even the weird ones, even the not so used ones, okay? So... Obviously, when the game first came out, there was some overpowered stuff, namely the PDW, the MSMC, like everybody was running around with those till they caught those nerfs. They're still good to this day, but they're just not quite the overpowered, you know, monsters that they were on launch day back in 2012. You saw a lot of AN-94s and you saw a lot of M8s, but let's not forget weapons like the MTAR, the Type 25, and the SWAT. Those were great weapons, even though you didn't see them as much, like I said, you put them in the hands of a good player, they're gonna go off with it. For some machine guns, there was a lot of MSMC, there was a lot of Scorpion Evo, but again, give someone the MP7, give someone the Vector, the Chicom, I thought the Chicom was a sleeper weapon, all right, I was one of those cultists, but they're all good weapons. You could do well with any gun in the game. Sniping, arguably <laughs> not even really arguably it was a bit overpowered but good sniping it, it's kind of a necessary evil in all of the best call of duties you'll notice that is a common theme name all your favorite call of duty games more likely than not but besides black ops 1 with the exception of that the snipers are probably pretty good in that game so was there anything bad about black ops 2 honestly it's pretty hard to name something that was like bad bad about black ops 2 from the ground up it's just a solid game there's really no arguing it i'm really not one to believe that overpowered weapons is a legitimate argument because there are overpowered weapons in every single cod and most of them do get nerfed or fixed to a reasonable degree but i will say this there were some maps in black ops 2 that were just down horrendous okay i don't know what these dudes were thinking when they designed some of these maps so the maps in black ops 2 they're pretty clearly divided into three categories there were the goats there were the ones that were just okay and then there's the ones that were just straight up bad the goats hijacked standoff plaza slums raid and i guess nuketown you know nuketown was still fun back then now it's nothing but a dead horse. Then you had the maps that were just kind of okay. You know, they were playable. They weren't the greatest. Cargo, Overflow, Meltdown, Carrier, Express, and Yemen, I guess. Honestly, I really think Express and Yemen were a lot better than those two, but they're surely not goats. So, I, you know, we'll just call them the upper tier of the okay maps. They're definitely the two best in there. And then you just had the ones that were straight up dog shit. Drone, Turbine, and Aftermath. Who on God's green earth made these maps and okayed them? Hey, Tim, I'll use your joke here, okay? Did anybody playtest these bitches? No, absolutely not. These are some of the worst maps ever made. Any Call of Duty player will agree with these. And when you take those three really bad ones and you put them up against the six mediocre ones, so that's nine not great maps versus six really great maps, it's really not the best ratio of maps. So if there was going to be one argument against Black Ops 2, I think the maps is really probably the best argument that someone could realistically make. Anyway, I'm out of time. Tim, start talking again right now if you love Modern Warfare. You better include that in the video. Next up, let's talk about the grind. If you weren't aware, there was a regular prestige system at level 55 where you could unlock any item previous within that previous prestige. Level 55 Prestige 10 made you a Prestige Master, so it was comparatively to Modern Warfare 3 where you had to be Prestige 20, level 80. Uh, yeah, Black Ops 2 Prestige Master was not super difficult by comparison. Black Ops 2 also introduced a diamond camo, a secret camo at that time for getting gold on every weapon and paved the way for Call of Duty nowadays to have your mastery finished camos like your Dark Matter, your Damascus and things like that. 
And quick side note about that, I really enjoyed grinding for those camos because they were not stupid. You didn't have to kill enemies behind cover. You didn't have to shoot UAVs with an RPG. There were simple challenges like get 100 headshots or, you know, get a 30 bloodthirsties or something like that. While time consuming and, you know, sometimes you hate yourself when you die on a four streak, I would much rather do those challenges than uh, killing enemies behind cover or just doing any challenges that are very dependent on what the enemy team is doing. The last thing I can think of when it comes to a grind is the nuclear metal. Obviously not the nuke from Modern Warfare 2, not the Moab from Modern Warfare 3, it's not a game changing effect. However, I remember seeing many YouTube videos of many people getting nuclears, double nuclears, triple nuclears, just getting 30 kills without dying, and obviously it lacks compared to the Modern Warfare series at that time, but like I said, many, many people were going for those and posting those on their YouTube and Twitch channels. Unfortunately, because of the low prestige system and the fact that there was no Damascus or Dark Matter grind, I'm unfortunately going to have to give the grind aspect a B rating. I want to talk about League Play very quickly here. I never really got huge into League Play. I think I've played a few games. I can probably count the number of times I've played in that mode on my hand. But I did want to talk about the YouTube slash competitive scene that was definitely influencing the Black Ops 2 player base because of it was blowing up at that time, right? You had your nade shot, you had your scump, a lot of these pro athletes were playing, they were taking the game super seriously because of league play, and it made people feel like they could also do the same. Obviously there was always game battles, but you could definitely see yourself progress against different opponents in an actual ranking system in Call of Duty. This obviously set the pavement for future Call of Duties to have their own versions of league play, ranked play, and uh, hopefully today's Call of Duties start launching with something like this because Black Ops 2 did, and that game came out almost nine years ago. Because of this, I have to give league play an A for its influence on this game. Next up here, let's talk about DLC. Black Ops 2 actually introduced the first post-launch weapon, the Peacekeeper, which I personally actually bought at that time. I actually don't buy DLC that often, but I actually bought it because I enjoyed that map pack and the Peacekeeper looked really interesting. As a whole, in terms of maps, they were not great. Aside from some BO1 remakes and a few others I might mention at the end, many of the new maps weren't super desirable. It, it lost its charm from the simple three lane maps and ended up being a little more chaotic and wild comparatively. Aside from the maps like Cove, Rush, and Grind, there were some standout maps, but others definitely slipped my mind and probably yours too, even if you bought those packs. Sadly, DLC has to have the lowest rating in my opinion, and I'm gonna have to give DLC a C+. I want to talk a bit about the pros and cons. I want to talk a bit about personal opinions and kind of how the community consensus kind of felt at that time. So let's start off with the pros. In my opinion, Black Ops 2 had a lot of colorful, three-laned, action-packed, fast-paced maps. There was usable score streaks. There was a sense of balance after games like Mono Warfare 2 and Mono Warfare 3 where they had death streaks. They had a lot of things that could randomly kill you. I also like that Black Ops 2 took itself seriously with league play and hardpoint, but kept itself fun and arcadey with the maps, uh, the fact that you could use snipers and shotguns, and the balanced weapon meta in terms of the fact that you could use anything to succeed. On the flip side in the cons, I do think that there was a split focus on appealing to noobs as well as a hardcore fan base. I think this was definitely a juggling act you could see from Treyarch, and whenever some things were nerfed, a lot of people were out crying. For instance, the DSR snipers, uh, Vonderhaar was getting death threats at that time. And speaking of snipers, I think the snipers were definitely OP. I think the shotguns were far too easy, had way too much range, you know, things like that. Shock charges, bouncing beddies, claymores, a lot of things. C4s were in this game. Contrary to Mono for 3 and Mono for 2 having death streaks, there was a lot of random stuff in here that could kill you as well. But I guess that's just the case with every single Call of Duty. Wrapping it up here with a final grade and a personal bias, I just want to say I love this game. I have over 28 days of playtime in this game. I've played every single mode, I've hit max prestige, I've gotten pretty much every single gun in this game diamond, and just had an overall blast. Maybe it's the time period I played in, maybe I had nothing else to do in my life, maybe it's because I was playing with friends. But I did want to mention that I played a ton of free for all. And this game taught me a lot of things about Call of Duty. It taught me how to predict spawns, how to rotate in hardpoint, what a callout is. I learned when and when not to rush because the game showed you that it was possible. You did not have to worry about your footsteps being heard. You didn't have to worry about constantly running dead silence and things like that. You could push certain objectives when you could. You had to wait for teammates sometimes. And it created a competitive atmosphere, yet still was fun for new players like me. 
The diamond camo grind was an absolute blast. I, I was thoroughly enjoyed with that grind. It was awesome to work towards something and not just mindlessly play without any progression, aside from the prestige system, which honestly, once you hit max prestige, it doesn't really mean anything anyway. Like I said before, and I want to reiterate, Black Ops 2 appealed to both campers and rushers. It had enough streak variety to appeal to every audience as well, and it was simple enough to not be overcomplicated like Call of Duty Ghost was a year after where they completely expanded the, uh, the perk system. I definitely think Black Ops 2 kept the COD formula that was working with them and added things that made the game feel fresh and futuristic, a feeling that COD players never previously got because Black Ops 2 is definitely the most futuristic Call of Duty that we'd seen up to that point. I also want to make a small appreciation for the lobby music you've probably been hearing in the background of this video here and there. Black Ops 2's music and the overall lobby, the atmosphere was just amazing. I remember getting extremely hyped from the trailer when that launched on YouTube in 2012 and I was just completely excited about it and I just really, really love this game. So rounding it out here, I just want to say Black Ops 2 is my favorite Call of Duty game for all of these reasons and uh, I miss it to this day. I miss it so much. So that's actually going to do it for this video. Uh, this is my complete Black Ops 2 multiplayer analysis review, why it was amazing in my personal opinion. Let me know your feedback down in the comment section down below. Drop your feedback on Black Ops 2. What did you disagree with? What did you agree with me on? Is Black Ops 2 your favorite Call of Duty? And what Call of Duty do you want to see me do one of these reviews for in the future? Obviously one of the longer videos on my channel, but if you've stuck around this long and you're still here and you enjoyed it, Go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you're new. Share this video with your friends. If it created any talking points for you and your homies from, you know, years ago, uh, go ahead and share this video to them as well. Thank you so much for everybody who stopped by, who's still watching up until this point, and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.